What's going on, everyone? Scott here. Welcome back to the channel. So Michigan State basketball wraps up their Spain trip, going 2-1 and one in their exhibition games over there. We already recapped the first game over there against the Madrid All-Stars. So we're just going to talk about games 2 and 3 against the Valencia All-Stars and the KKFMP, which is based in Belgrade and plays in the Serbia, one of the Serbia leagues over there. Um, also, what we took away from these three exhibition games and what we're thinking about the squad as we move in to about two months, a little more than two months away from tipping off the season. Before we do jump in, if you could just hit that like and subscribe button down there for more Michigan State content as we inch, cl inch closer to football season beginning next week and basketball season, as I said, about two months away, a little more than two months away. So game two against Valencia was the Cohen Carr game, had 20 points, seven boards. Jay Nakins added 11 and five. Frankie Fiddler added 11 points. Jackson Kohler, 10. And Simon Zapala with 10 and seven. Nice bounce back game for him. Now this game I was unfortunately not able to catch live on the Instagram live that they were able to stream all three of these games over there was just able to see a couple minutes and their little minute or so cut up on Twitter afterwards. Uh, but this one was a blowout, 105-59. So it was a nice balanced scoring attack, at least on that end, while also blowing their opponent out. Now the last game in Spain on Tuesday against KKFMP, which is a league that plays over there in the Serbian, one of the Serbian professional leagues over there. The best opponent they played by far, and thankfully I was able to watch pretty much all of this one. And as I said, this was the best team they played, and they were getting into MSU early. They were up pressing and defending MSU hard early. They were pressing Jeremy early, picking him up the length of the court, not letting them get out in transition, obviously what MSU is known for. I'm sure that was the scout for this game. I'm sure, I don't know if they scout exhibition games, but obviously if knowing Michigan State even a little bit, obviously that's what they like to do. So that was clearly an emphasis by them to not let Jeremy and Michigan State in general get out in transition. Um, but I think this was a good test for Jeremy to see how he handled that pressure up front and the overall ball pressure, and I thought he did fairly well. Ricky Fiddler, early on in the game, we were able to see him take the ball off the rim and go immediately and just go uh, get a bucket on the other end. And I think that part of the game is going to help MSU's offense a lot and help their transition offense, which unfortunately has struggled and not been Michigan State Sanders the last couple years. They ran a little bit better last year, but just not up to Michigan State standards in the last couple years. And if we have Frankie being able to grab the ball off the rim and go, Jaden being able to grab the ball off the rim and go, and obviously Jeremy as well, either off the rim or off the make, I think that will bode well for Michigan State. Michigan State did start this game in an 8-0 to zero deficit, uh, but they were able to kind of fight and crawl back over multiple runs throughout the game, but it was pretty much consistently in that 8-point deficit game for Michigan State. With Simon Zapala, he obviously had a good game two as opposed to game one. Not the best showing for Simon Zapala, but game two, he was able to bounce back. Had a decent game three as well. We've saw, we've seen him a lot over in this Spain trip with a lot of DHO at dribble handoff action at the top of the key and going into the rings. Seems like he's probably the most comfortable center with that action to this point. Uh, the defensive rotations as a whole, though, for the whole team across every position group needs a lot of work. And I think that is a major emphasis going in these last couple months before the season starts. Getting over to shooters late, you know, kind of missing rotations uh, down on the block, which causes bad positioning for rebounding and whatnot. Then obviously that messes up your break, which then you're not able to get into your offense. So just causes a lot of problems. Now, Cone Card, this wasn't the 20-point game like it was on Sunday, but he was impactful in a lot of different parts of the game. He had an incredible sequence where he got a block, then on that same possession was able to get the rebound, and then on the ensuing offensive possession was able to catch an alley-oop from Jeremy on the other end. And that is what's so exciting and amazing about Cohen Carr going forward is, you know, kind of last year, a lot of the action and the highlights that we saw of him was obviously his incredible dunks. You know, he's obviously the best dunker in the 
the country and, you know, one of the most exciting players in that regard there. But I think for Cohen to take the next step individually and for this team to take the next step, I think Cohen needs to use that athleticism. One, on the defensive end, like we saw there on that possession I'm referring to, getting blocks, getting in passing lanes, getting steals to help to facilitate the break for Michigan State. But then also on the offensive end, um, if he can use that athleticism to, you know, possibly, you know, get a dribble drive game as well, or even uh, dribble into a jumper into the lane, develop a little bit of a jump shot. That's when I think the best version of Cohen Carr will come out. And if he adds those couple pieces to his games, I think this is a name in Cohen Carr that you can see called within the first round of the NBA draft in about two years or so. And a little bit more on Cohen here in a minute. But next, uh, Jackson Kohler had a pretty good game. Um, had a pretty decent trip, I'd say, overall throughout the three games. And I will say, obviously, we know about his offensive scoring prowess. But I will say he had some timely offensive boards on this trip as well. And in this last game on Tuesday as well. No, he's not Xavier Tillman down there. But he can get some timely offensive rebounds if that set up some timely offensive buckets off second chances as well. Obviously, he's the best offensive center option right now if you're not putting Xavier Booker at the five, which it seems like they want him to play the four. So Jackson Kohler right now, best option at the five offensively. Obviously, on the defensive end, still a little bit of ways to go. But I feel like in certain ways, you can say that in some ways about all three of the centers right now, I guess four if you want to include uh, Jesse McCullough. But overall, I think this was a solid trip for Jackson Kohler. Uh, freshman Jace Richardson played incredible this trip. Um, I think he's got to be in the rotation immediately. He'll play tight defense, uh, similar to Jeremy in terms of style of defense. Um, he was able to get to the lane a couple times as well this last game and made some nice plays. Hit a couple shots as well throughout the Spain trip. The start of the second half lineup, I think, has got to be the closing lineup. I think this is their best lineup. I don't think this will be the lineup that they start with. Even though, as I said, I think it's their best lineup. Jeremy Fears, Jay Nakins, Frankie Fiddler, Cohen Carr, and Xavier Booker. And even with this lineup, if you like, in terms of a closing lineup, you can even slide Trey in there and, you know, put Frankie at the four if you're bringing, you know, say you're bringing Cohen Carr out, you want Book at the five, or you want to even go small ball, play Carr at the five. Xavier Booker, again, had some nice moments, that incredible game one, uh, but had some more nice moments here in this third game, uh, creating off the dribble drive, uh, dribble drive from Aikens, kick out to Xavier Booker back out on that right wing and was able to dribble to the lane, uh, you know, kind of mid lane and able to back down, get over his right shoulder uh, for a fall away shot. It was in that little cut up video that MSU Basketball did put out on Twitter. So I'm sure most of you saw that. But overall, as a team, I think the competitiveness they showed this game particularly, really even going back to the first game, was a positive to see. They never let it really get out of hand. It did get to double digits a couple times, but we're within nine going into the fourth, uh, within five with 10 minutes to go there in the fourth. I will say some things that definitely need to work on that we talked about last year as well that we've seen a little bit. Yes, these are just exhibition games. Not freaking out about this stuff right now, but free throws. Free throws were quite a bit of a problem last year. We saw some missed free throws on this trip. Uh, rebounding in general, uh, we had a possession near the end of the game on Tuesday where playing solid defense, actually getting stops, the rotations were good. But we just kept giving up offensive rebounds that eventually, I believe, led to a score. And that's just backbreaking. Those plays where you, you know, are able to get one, two, even three stops and you just give up three, four offensive rebounds ends in a, you know, a dagger three or even a, a two pointer, you know, whatever. Those are just backbreaking and destroy any momentum you have. And MSU kind of had the momentum at that point. Looked like they were surging back, I believe, within like four at that point, maybe five, something like that. Um, and then as again, as I kind of just alluded to a little bit, but the defensive rotations just need a lot of work going into the season. But I'm sure that'll be 
you know, ironed out as well. Obviously, this is just an exhibition. Don't have the big lead up. And, you know, all the practices going into this with the defensive rotation. Then, obviously, you're playing a lot of new guys in terms of transfers, freshmen coming in. So, that I'm not super worried about. You kind of figured going on this trip that you'd have some defensive rotations that uh, you would need to address and that probably aren't going to look how they're going to look in November once the season gets going. But I think big positives, uh, closing games for Michigan State. You saw even though they lost its last game 110 to 115, Jeremy in game one helped close the door late with his scoring and then really throughout the game and, you know, late in that game as well with his playmaking. And then Frankie Fiddler closing out game three, had a couple nice possessions, uh, was able to get to the free throw line off an and one and, you know, hitting a, a couple other buckets there late in the game. So that was solid to see uh, two of your main guys being able to close out there in competitive games. Obviously that game three ended in a loss, but still solid things to see, especially like I said, against a pretty good opponent. So overall, as I keep saying, successful trip in my opinion. Um, I like where we're at. Uh, Jeremy running the show with everything, basically showing what this thing can look like with him running the show. Uh, Jaden Akins uh, still adjusting to being that number one option at the two position. Frankie Fiddler coming in, getting used to the offense and everything, the players, and showed some solid veteran moments and playmaking as well. Going card at the four is something that needs to happen every time he is on the floor. Please do not play Cohen Carr at the three. He needs to play the four or even a small ball five. I think the four and the small by five unlocks all of his potential. Xavier Booker made some pretty good strides since the last time we've seen him. Now it just needs to obviously make sure that once we get to the regular season, that book is doing this consistently. And I think he can. And then obviously still got to get on the glass more. But you can say that as I go into the center position, you can say that about the whole team, really, and that whole front court as well. Need to get on the glass more. But the center position, I think Jax was the biggest winner, as I kind of alluded to earlier, uh, given what he can give you on, on the offensive end. But showing some offensive rebounding skills, too, I think was a big positive from this trip. Um, and I think Coop and Zapala will still be in good spots, too. I think Coop, as that defender, need him to lock down that role. And Zapala, in certain, you know, actions, I think, especially him being comfortable with those DHO sets at the top of the key. And I think he could be a solid screen setter as well. Trey Holloman's going to get a lot of run this year as well, whether that's backing up Jeremy at the one, which I believe he obviously will. Jay Nay could start at the two. So backing up Jeremy at that one coming in or even playing alongside of him at the two. Uh, Jace Richardson really stuck out to me in terms of freshman. Kirk Tane, need to see more of him, but I think his shooting is going to be an asset for the team this year. And I think both those guys will see some minutes in year one with Michigan State. Uh, Garrett Norman right now, Probably still just a rotational role this year, at least to start the year in terms of a knockdown sh shooter. Uh, Got to show, similar to how, who everyone compares him to in terms of Matt McQuaid, develop that defensive intensity going forward to really keep him on the court for longer so he's not just known as someone who can come in and knock down a shot. If he can add a little bit of defensive intensity, then that will be great for not just Michigan State going forward, but Garrett as well. Uh, Jesse McCullough. I wouldn't be surprised if he red shirts this year with the as many bodies that's in that front court. I'm guessing probably a red shirt this year. Who knows? Anything can happen. Still two months away from the season. So could something change? Yes. But right now, I'd have to imagine that Jesse McCullough does probably red shirt this year. But overall, the team stock, in my opinion, for Michigan State is up. Still about two months till the opener. Obviously, like I said, a little bit more than two months. But that'll do it for this one. So next week, we will have MSU football galore with the opener next Friday. Uh, we'll have a fun theme video going into the game, and then we'll obviously have the preview for the game next Friday as well. And, and then coming down the line as well, we'll talk more about Michigan State basketball as we inch closer to the season now. I imagine once they get back, obviously school starts next week. So got a couple weeks until, you know, fall practices actually start. So Probably won't start seeing some more clips and getting some more stuff from the basketball program here for a couple weeks. But when we do, you know where to find it right here on the channel. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.